<clears throat> Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math questions out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 226 and today is our lesson number 103. If you look at page number 226 where it says example 2.4.1 2.4.1 that's the problem that we're going to do but with a little bit of twist what I've done with this problem is to, pre is to present to you the exact same problem in a different format which it can appear in the exam and to show you the, to, to give you the example what I would like you to do is go to go to this video here, GR, just type in GRE Math, day 129, page 328, the 10th edition of the book. The book that I'm talking about, the book that I'm referring to, is this book right here. It says Practicing to Take the GRE, General Test, the 10th edition, which is the older version of the exam. It, it has seven exams, so if you're looking for additional material to practice for, for the exam, this is an excellent source. In my opinion, I'm sure all the other people who publish books on the uh, practice exam for the GRE, I'm sure they all do an excellent job. But in my opinion, the best source is this one. My philosophy is very simple. If you're going to spend your time and your money to practice for the real exam, the best thing to do is to practice on the real exam. That's all. Don't, don't, don't buy any other material. Somehow acquire this book, 10th edition. You will find plenty of material to work on. And the problem that, I, that I'm about to solve, that, I'm, that, that we're going to do together, is based on the format of the question that appeared on page number 328. I covered that question. If you want to watch my older video, just, just type in GRE Math Day 129, as opposed to Revised GRE. Don't, this is a Revised GRE, obviously. Just type in GRE Math Day 129, page 328, page 328 of this book. 10E for the 10th edition and it will pop right up. Anyway, enough of the talk, let's do the problem. Here's the problem right here put in the blackboard for you. Is the equation that you see there, the problem that you see there on page number 226 is what it is here, as I said before, but in a different format. What we're being asked here, I have I've converted into a quantitative comparison question, just like they did in that on that page right here. The question is how does the twice the sum of the roots of this equation the equation that you see on page 226, how does twice the sum of the roots compare to zero? That's all. That's simple. That's how simple it is. Or better yet, compare to one. Let's change it to one. Let's make it interesting. So here's our here's, here's what we do. We are, let me reproduce the equation. X 2x squared minus x minus 6 equals to zero. So let's start the process. Enough of the talk. We gotta get going. The very first step that we need to do here, well there are two ways actually you can find out the roots of this equation. Roots simply means, when they talk about the roots, it simply means solutions of this equation. And there are two ways you can find the two solutions to this equation. One is to use what is known as a quadratic formula, which is fine if you want to use that, which is what they show you in the book there. Another method is to use what is known as factorization method. We're going to use factorization method. In the factorization method, what we're looking for are two numbers. We are looking for two numbers which add up to the coefficient of the middle guy right here, which add up to negative 1 right here. And, and which adds up to negative 1 and whose product, whose product is the product of these two coefficients. This is a positive 2 here positive 2 and a negative 6 and whose product is equal to is equal to positive 2 times negative 6 or negative 12. Our job is to think of two such numbers. Can you think of two such numbers 
that add up to a negative 1, two numbers that add up to negative 1, but when you multiply, you get negative 12. Well, obviously, since the, the, the sum is on, uh, a negative 1 is such a small number, and their product is a negative number, which implies that one of those numbers has to be positive, another one has to be negative. One, one such pair is staring right in our face, which is, of course, a positive 2 and a negative 6. Of course, they, uh, their product is negative 12, but we can see there, it equals negative 12. Their product is negative 12. That does the job. But it doesn't fulfill the first condition. The first condition is that they have to add up to, they have to add up to negative 1. Positive 2 and a negative 6 do not add up to negative 1. They add up to negative 4. This doesn't do the job. So how can we break up 12 in such a way that we get a sum of negative 1? Well, let's find out. There's 12 here. One, one pair that comes to my mind readily is 4 times 3. 4 times 3 is 12. But we don't want 12. We want negative 12. So let's put a negative here. If you put a negative there, there are only two possibilities. Either we have a negative 4 and a positive 3, or we have a positive 4 and a negative 3. Let's find out which of these two scenarios adds up to negative 1. Negative 4 and a positive 3. Oh, there you go. Negative 4 and a positive 3 add up to negative 1. Negative 4 and positive 3. This scenario works. This one is no good. So that's it. We found our two numbers. Negative 4 and a positive 3. So we're going to express that negative x as the sum of negative 4x, sum of negative 4x, and a negative 3x. Negative 4x and, an, and a positive 3x is going to give us our negative x in the middle. And negative 4x times positive 3x is going to give us our negative 12x squared, which is what we need here. Negative 6 times 2x squared times 2x squared, negative 6 times 2x squared gives us the negative 12x squared right here. So let's do it then. Enough of the talk. Oh, I shouldn't have erased all this thing in a hurry because now I forgot what it was. 2x, is, we, we can figure it out uh, quick, quickly. Must have been negative 4. Must have been negative 4 because we need a negative coefficient here. Because if I put positive in front of 4, 4 being larger than 3, we'll end up with a positive. We don't positive. There you go. This is it. A negative 4x, negative 4x, and a positive 3x add up to negative x. That's it. Now, we ask ourselves, in these first two terms, 2x squared and a negative 4x, what common factor do they have? Well, first of all, I see a 2 and a 4, which means they have a common factor of 2. I also see an x squared and an x, which means they have a common factor of x. If we take out 2x common, what are we left from the first quantity of 2x squared? From the 2x squared, if we take out 2x, we are left with x, because x times 2x is going to give us our 2x squared back to what we started out with minus what number times 2 is going to give us negative 4? Minus 2 obviously because a negative 2 and a positive 2 is going to give us our negative 4 and x, already, x is already taken out. Now we look at these two facts, these two terms here. Now we move on to these two terms. A positive 3x and a negative 6. What common factor do you find there? Well. I see a 3 and I see a 6. We can take out 3 common. If we take out 3 common, what are we left with from 3x? From 3x, if we take out 3, we're left with x. Because 3 times x is going to give us our 3x. What are we left here if we take out 3 commons from negative 6? Negative 6 divided by 3 is a negative 2. In other words, negative 2 times positive 3 positive 3 times negative 2 gives us back our negative 6. Now we look at these two parts. Now we look at these two parts and ask ourselves what is the common things in these two parts? The common thing here that we see is what we see in the parenthesis, x minus 2. We're going to take out x minus 2 as common. We're going to take it out common. take out x minus 2 common, what are we left from the first quantity? Right here, the first quantity, you see what are we left here? We are left with 2x. 
If we take out x minus 2 from the second quantity right here, this is the second quantity. If we take out x minus 2 as common, what are we left here? We're left with 3. And the whole thing we told is equal to 0. If the, if the product of these two quantities equals 0, that implies that either this implies that either x minus 2 is equal to 0 or 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. If x minus 2 is equal to 0, that implies that x must equal 2. Or if, or if 2x plus 2x plus 3 is equal to 0, that implies that x must equal negative 3 halves. Well, those are our roots. Those are called the roots. Those are called the roots. These are the roots. We're not done yet. Because we're not asked to form, we're not asked to compare, uh, we're not asked to find simply the roots of the equation. We are asked here to compare twice the sum of the roots versus 1. So let's find the sum of the roots, shall we? Let's do it up here. We have a little bit of room here. I'm going to squeeze this zero back inside here a little bit so we, I have a straight line going. So the roots are 2 and a negative 3 halves. So the sum of the roots is 2 plus negative 3 halves. How much is 2 plus a negative 3 halves? Negative 3 halves is the same as negative 1 and a half. 2 plus 1 and a half is half. Equals half. And if the sum of the root is half, twice the sum of the roots, twice the sum of the roots would be 2 times half. And of course 2 times half is just 1. Therefore, twice the sum of the roots, which is 1, on the other column we have 1, therefore the answer is C. That's it, we are done. That was the end of the solution. Yes, it's a fairly complicated problem. It will appear as a hard question. It will not appear as an easy or a medium question in the exam. This is considered a fairly difficult question for the GRE. That was it. I'm done with the, I'm done with the concept of factorization. We worked on it uh, for the last few days, last two, three days, I believe. I know we did it for at least three days because I remember doing it from day number 101, 102, and 103. Tomorrow we'll do the problems that you see on the next page, which are about inequalities on page number 228. All right? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.